Hey everybody, welcome to Improv FAQ. This is our first episode, so we're gonna talk about a very basic question, which is what is improv? We'll cover what it is, what it isn't, what it looks like, and a little bit about how it works. Improv is a surprisingly difficult thing to define. There's a lot of mixed understandings and different definitions out there, and it, honestly, it can be a pretty confusing world to get involved with. I've been doing improv for like 10 years, and sometimes I'm still like, what? What is this? What are we doing? Let's start with a very broad definition of improvising, and maybe that will shed some light on why some of the confusion exists. Improvising is making it up as you go. It's creating in the moment. And the idea of improvising belongs to pretty much all art forms, especially music, dance, acting, freestyle rap. I mean, I was looking up books on improv the other day, and there were a surprising amount of results related to improv quilting. Problem solving on the job is improvised. Conversation is improvised. Most of your day-to-day -day life is improvised. The point is, it's pretty bold for any art form to try to claim exclusive rights to the word improv. But here we are. Improv. You did this to yourself, improv. So, let's narrow it down. In plain English, improv is unscripted theater. If you come across a place that calls itself an improv theater and you go to see an improv show, you can expect to see any combination of scenes, stories, characters, games, challenges, songs, and everything you see is going to be made up on the spot by the performers, aka improvisers. If you see an improv class being offered, you can expect to learn how to do those things. Which brings me to my next point. Some people go to take an improv class and understandably have misled expectations. So before we go any further talking about what improv is, let's talk a little bit about what improv is not. Improv is not stand-up. Difference being, stand-up is usually somebody on a microphone talking directly to the audience, telling jokes that are usually written or thought out ahead of time, if not heavily rehearsed. And sure, some stand-ups will riff with the audience or speak off the cuff in a way that is actually improvised. Sometimes they'll do that for the entire set. But if you go to see an improv show or take an improv class, don't expect to see joke telling or learn how to write and deliver a joke. Talking to you, Fred. Improv is not sketch. Sketch is also written, or at least pre-planned, and usually comes in collections of short scenes and character bits. Saturday Night Live, Mad TV, Portlandia, Kids in the Hall, Key and Peele, The Chappelle Show, Inside Amy Schumer, Monty Python's Flying Circus, all that. All of these are great examples of sketch comedy. A lot of sketches are developed from improv, but basically once it's developed, it's no longer improv. Improv is not trying to find ways to work in your best jokes and quips and one-liners that you have in your back pocket into a show. A lot of people ask, I know it's improv, but how much of it is really improvised? And the answer is, or should be, all of it is actually truly improvised. The goal of improv is not to try and trick the audience into believing that something is improvised when it secretly isn't. As performers, a major reason why it's so fun and addictive is because it's completely improvised. Now let's talk about what improv looks like, what you can expect to see if you go to an improv show, or maybe you just went to an improv show and you're like, was that improv? I'm, I'm still not sure. There's a pretty wide variety of improv show styles out there. Sometimes it's formatted like a game show, like Whose Line Is It Anyway? Or it could be one group doing an hour-long, high-concept genre show. Or it could be a bunch of different groups doing 20 minutes each, and there's, like, no consistency <laughs> in show style from group to group. Or it could be a duo show or a solo show. But regardless of what kind of improv show you're seeing, here are some things that you can usually expect. Usually, an improv show is intended to be comedy. Sometimes an improvised show will aim to be dramatic or non-comedic, or maybe it happens to be funny, but the performers don't really care as long as it's entertaining or moving in some way or another. Other times, an improv show is definitely intended to be comedy, but it certainly, unfortunately, is not. Usually, improv involves acting. The performers play characters and act out scenes. Sometimes it's a collection of unrelated scenes, or it's an entire improvised play that follows a central storyline. Improv shows often involve non-scenic segments, like telling a real-life story or playing a charade-style guessing game, but usually, in an improv show, you're gonna see some acting. Characters in scenes. Usually, an improv show will use suggestions or other forms of participation from the audience to inspire the players. Can we get a suggestion of an opening line of dialogue? How about a suggestion of a location that would fit on the stage? There's something in Jeff's pocket. What is it? 
I'm gonna flip through the pages of this book. Somebody tell me when to stop. Birthday. Thank you, birthday. We're gonna do an improvised sci-fi horror romance. What's the name of a sci-fi horror romance that's never been made? Since it's unscripted, it's helpful for the improvisers to have some kind of starting point to get things going. And using suggestions from a live audience helps prove that it is unscripted. Sometimes the performers don't ask for a suggestion. There's a pretty well-known improv duo called TJ and Dave who for years and years were doing their show and instead of asking for a suggestion, they would just say, trust us, this is all made up. And the lights would go down and when they came back up, they would start improvising. Or the inspiration for a show could come from any number of outside sources like a newspaper or Craigslist ads or a fortune cookie. I don't know, but more often than not, you can expect improvisers are gonna ask people in the audience for some inspiration. Usually improv does not involve the use of costumes, props, or set pieces. Since improvisers are making it up all on the spot, it's most helpful if we keep ourselves and the stage looking like a blank canvas. Instead of props, we use object work or pantomime so that at any moment, anything we need, we can just grab out of thin air. Oh, thank you so much, yes. Ah, a coffee mug full of coffee. On stage, we might have a few chairs or boxes for levels and to like sit and stuff, or maybe doorways and window frames, which are nice for entrances and exits, but anything more than that can be distracting or restricting. Same thing with clothes. You don't wanna wear anything that stands out or burst the imagination bubble when you're trying to create a believable character on the spot. Sometimes a show will use costumes, props, set pieces as an added challenge or maybe a thematic element, but usually we keep it pretty bare bones. So, Improv is a world for people who don't want to learn a script, dress too nice, or spend too much on production. So now let's talk a little bit about what makes improv work and what you could expect out of an improv class. There are lots of schools of thought and different philosophies in the improv world, but most of them are gonna overlap on a few essential ideas about what makes improv work. Let's start with the idea of agreement, support, cooperation as people. You have to want to work together with a group. If we're gonna build a world of make-believe in the moment, we can't spend our time disputing each other or disagreeing about what to do next. Next is already happening. And to be clear, it's fine if characters disagree and fight with each other. It's not okay if performers are fighting and disagreeing with each other. Another essential idea is listening. I can't support or agree with an idea that I didn't hear. The better you are at paying attention and giving your full focus to what's going on right now, the better you're gonna be able to stay in the moment and build in the moment. Comfort and confidence are also essential ideas. You've probably heard the statistic that people's fear of public speaking is greater than their fear of death. In order to be a successful improviser, you have to chip away at that stage fright and train yourself to get out of panic mode so that you can pay attention and make strong, fearless choices and act with the kind of confidence that's gonna pull people into your world. Another essential idea, and maybe even the most essential idea, is fun. Improv should be fun. If you're not having fun now, it should be because you're working on something that's gonna make it a whole lot more fun later, period. Because of these essential elements, most classes are gonna start with team building exercises and icebreakers, things that are gonna get you more comfortable working with a group. Beyond that, in my view, you're always working on one of two things, your sense of play or performance skills. Sense of play is the subjective side of things. We just talked about having fun and improvisers should be really good at having fun. Get back to playing like a kid, expanding your imagination, just like tapping into your sense of humor. Improv is full of really great games and exercises that are geared toward exactly that. No right or wrong way to do them, just being silly, absurd, opening yourself up to that spark of inspiration that makes you laugh and being able to grab onto that spark and blow it up that to me is your sense of play. Performance skills are the more objective qualities of improv. This includes basic theater and acting skills like staging, projecting, cheating out to the audience, moving with a purpose, accents, and physical characterization. You also have your comedy specific skills like rule of three and patterns, heightening, callbacks, analogy, and connections. And then you have your improv specific skills like editing, object work, training your working memory, establishing who, what, and where, or navigating specific show structures. That may sound like a list of nonsense terms, but that's what classes are for. So hopefully this video gave you a good idea of what improv is, what it is not, and generally what you can expect from an improv show or an improv class. One thing to keep in mind in answering the question, what is improv? 
It is definitely new. It's a pretty recent, continually developing, rapidly spreading young art form that is still taking shape. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it informative. If you have follow-up questions or you disagree with my take on what defines improv or you think I missed anything, please feel free to comment below. I would love to keep the discussion going. I plan to do a whole series on improv FAQs. I already have my own list of what are the most frequently asked questions in my experience as an improv teacher and performer, but I would love to hear your questions so I can be sure that I'm covering them and really giving the best, most useful answers. Thanks again, and until next time.